right up. There you go. Now you can hear me. Hopefully that will fix the Monday morning um, or Monday afternoon uh, technical uh, glitches. So hopefully that, uh, that that makes a difference there, Phil. You could obviously hear me on TikTok and realise I was talking. Well, crypto is a kind of investment as well. Absolutely. I mean, you can it's, it's a it's a financial instrument that you can trade or invest with, which is why we discuss it on this channel. Uh, on a, a thing, I don't trade tend to trade intraday. I mean, like I say, I bought um, about 25 bucks of Luna, 70,000 uh, 70, Luna coins, 70,000 Luna tokens on Saturday Saturday night. Rather than buying my pizza, I just thought, no, oh, why not? Let's have a punt. Let's have a gamble. Um, so I bought 70,000 Luna tokens for $25, and um, it's now worth $11. <laughs> so it was a gamble. I'm just going to leave it there. I mean, I would have I would have eaten that. That was my pizza money, so I would have eaten that. So it makes no difference. So if um, if if there is any comeback, I may get a nice. It's in one of the accounts I don't use very often. It's in my Binance account because obviously you couldn't trade uh, Luna or, or uh, Coinbase or or Bitget or, or whatever. Um, so it's in my Binance account. So I'll, ah, well, whatever. Twenty five quid. It's it's worth a flutter. But it was the ha ha sleeping uh, that made me think that you was having a little little bit of a joke. And I, I was like, I must have missed must must have missed the punchline. Why am I not seeing the correct? Sometimes I'm not as technical as I like to think I am. Let's have a look at the two gappers. Uh, save uh, back above the view up. Now I'm interested. Oh, oh sorry. So um, data storage I'm, I'm interested in. Back above the view up. And it's back above $3. As long as it stays above $3. Save. Spirit Airlines, JetBlue looking to uh, to, to acquire them. Uh, made a bid, a tentative bid. So it's probably going to spark a bit of a bidding war. May push the price up. Could be worth watching. So it's um, Spirit Airlines. Look at S-A-V-E. So three, three on my watch list so far. So let's see if I can just bring all the information I need onto one screen. It is a hot topic right now. Um, you're absolutely right to call that out since uh, the, the holes in the cryptoverse have been well and truly uncovered. Um, coordinated attack by a couple of um, financial whales, completely legally, completely legally, almost crashed the entire cryptoverse uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and that's what we saw with the, with the Terra Luna debacle. Uh, as a result, we got Bitcoin in freefall. Um, 
you know, 30% down uh, almost um, within a week. So yeah, it's it's very um, it's it's very topical right now. Uh, the platform I'm using, this this platform here is Das Trader Pro. I can't trade, um, I'm not able to trade crypto on this, but it gives me direct execution into, uh, into the market. So this is uh, a direct access software. Very kept most of its gains. Well, most of its gains from uh, from the last week, or the last couple of days, the pump from uh, from Friday kept most of its gains. So maybe we'll get a continuation. What I'm looking for. Hey Stewie, how are you doing? You're not the Stewie uh, from Family Guy by any chance, are you? Stewie Griffin. Alright, I think we're all set. Ready to go. What's the market going to give us in 90 minutes? So that's the question. At the moment, all the big movers are uh, small stocks, low price. On low volume, some of them. Neil Farmer. Synergis Tech, NLS Pharmaceutical, UNK International, all of these very low volume, but they made good moves. So just looking for some decent sized, some decent priced. Infusion, 10 bucks, but there's no volume at all. Neurosense. So I made a killing with Neurosense a couple of uh, couple of months ago. So I'll show you this on the daily so you can see it. So when this moved up, uh, it was started off about it was already about three hundred twenty percent up when I started trading it. So I don't trade anything below below three dollars. So this is Neurosense back in uh, back in mid March. Uh, and it moved up, and it went, when it went past three dollars, I can't recall when, when I actually got in off the top of my head. Uh, and then it went up to over eight dollars from on the same day from like one seventy, I think it was when it started. So it, it gapped up, and the news at the time was um, Alzheimer's treatment had good FDA results or clinical trial results for an Alzheimer's treatment. It moved. Uh, 750% on the day. So 750% uh, up on the day at its peak. I think I finished 68% up on the day. I made a huge, huge amount with that one on that um, on that particular uh, that particular trade. Good day. Why is it moving today? And it sold off. So this again, this is what I'm talking. What's typical when I say, don't get married to a stock because this 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 one as it moved up, 750% one day, and then it gapped down, moved up again the next day, gapped down slightly, it moved up, and then sold off ever since. And it's now back below. Well, it's, it's trading up today. It's a um, dollar fifty today, but there's probably people still holding bags around five and six dollars thinking it's going to come back and it, it may well do but the likelihood is 
he's it, had its day in the sunshine and the people holding bags at five and six dollars will never get the money back they'll either have to sell it a loss or, or just watch it slowly die let me see if there's a catalyst to die and if there is what does it look like No, I don't do I don't do forex trading. I don't do currency trading. Uh, I, I I don't see. Oh, there's no. It's it's just um, analyst. Um, oh, the um, investor, foreign investor, into Neurosense from last week. This doesn't seem to be anything else. Other than we've got unconfirmed earnings. There's nothing really jumping out at me with Neurosense. Um, no, the, the, there's a number of reasons I don't trade. Uh, I don't trade currencies, but it's, it's for me. I just feel it's higher risk uh, for less reward. Um, like I say, Neurosense here, we got a 750% move. So if you captured half of that, you'd have a 300% move that you can capture that with. That's without margin. So if you would then add 4x margin. Uh, to that you've potentially got just on, on half of that move you've potentially got a a 1200% gain that you could make on on that one stock you'll never do that with a with a forex pair you have to take huge leverage to, to get the infinitesimal changes within within a forex pair so um so that, that's why i don't trade um uh, forex Hey, Alistair. No, it it, do, it doesn't. Um, it it doesn't. So I've I've got. Uh, um, no, it, we've dash trap, dash dash trader. We don't we don't do the ladder. We've we, we've got I've got hot keys. I've got the hot buttons. I can enter manually. I can I can set orders. Um, I can place orders to to uh, to be triggered. I, there's a lot of the scripts I can use with it. It's very configurable, Dash Trader. So I, I can use a lot of different ways to uh, to to get into a trade. And why do I want to trade above over three dollars? It's just part of my strategy. So I used to trade anything that was moving. At one stage, um, I don't get first and foremost. I don't get leverage on anything under two dollars. That's the first part. But if you've got a reasonable account, you don't need leverage to take um, a sizable position on something that's less than $2 anyway. That being said, when I analyze my, my statistics, so I, tr I track every trade that I make uh, and I analyze my statistics. I, I usually do it on a daily, but I, I go into more deep uh, depth at the weekend and look at what I've been doing right and what I've been doing wrong, etc. When I analyze my statistics, I found that more often than not i'm a losing trader on stocks under three dollars so i've added it to my strategy that i'm not going to trade stocks under three dollars uh, and that way since i since i did that um my win percentage is a lot higher so it's, it's just a, i guess a psychological thing i just tend to lose more often than i gain when i'm trading stocks the the, the, the lower price stocks so i i set my cap at um or, or the floor at three dollars and i only trade any if it gets above three dollars i'll look at it um but i trade my sweet spot is kind of between four or five dollars and thirty dollars hey jackson good morning to you good afternoon whatever you sat uh well, let's have a look at the SPY. Right now, slightly down. This is the daily. Oh, let's look at it on the 60 minutes so you can see. So this is the hourly. You can see where we finished uh, on Friday, just over 400 on the SPY. Um, and we're slightly down. Uh, so it's a sort of fraction of a percent at the moment. 0.22%, um, which, is, which is not catastrophic. Which way is it going to go? We had... A, a good rally day last week on Friday into the close uh, it was just mad if I'm being completely honest um, the rally pre-market was where we, where we got most of the gains 
but we're not seeing that kind of volatility in the market today pre-market that's what i'm saying so you, you tell me is it going to go up or down what are your thoughts said everybody in the um everybody in the chat are the markets going to um are they going to vomit again or are we going to have a rally today you let me know in the chat let me know your thoughts What am I looking at? Well, Les seems to think it's going to go down. Anyone else? What am I looking at today? Well, I'm looking at um, uh, direct storage. Or data storage, sorry. Uh, which is on the one minute. Which is up. This is top top gapper at the moment in my, in my price range. I'm looking at Spirit Airlines. So save. Spirit Airlines, there's an aggressive takeover bid from JetBlue. Uh, and I'm looking at a continuation from Veru. After the gains we made with it on, on Friday. It was really it worked really well for us on Friday. So, if you're looking at smaller, um, smaller price stocks, got AgriForce, uh, which is which is doing well this morning. Chimerex, it's up seventeen percent. That's largely down to one big deal. And alkaline waters up. So these are kind of the, some of the bigger uh, bigger movers. Sundial's up today as well, ahead of its earnings report, which is out later. It's a huge float with Sundial, so I don't I, I tend not to mess with it because it's uh, got a huge float. Yeah, new week, morning alphabet. It's uh, it's a new week, and uh, I'm I'm feeling optimistic this week. I, I I don't know why. I just had a good, positive feeling on Friday, and that came through for me. So I'm going to try and have those those positive energy, positive feelings uh, a little bit more often, uh, because it came through on Friday. Let's see if it comes through today. Hello, Beth. Yeah, I saw that as well. Um, no nines. Yeah, I saw that. I was because um, when you left the stream, I, I, I saw the way that the the uh, the markets rallied, and uh, I know you were look you you, you were um, you were betting against them. So uh, I, I saw that. Is, is Michael on the stream? I mean, that's a good question because Michael was holding Veru into. Um, I think it was at 13.23. That, that that moved up after hours. If he'd had after hours, if, it, if he'd had after hours uh, trading, he could have made a nice little profit. And then look, you approach it the same way I do, Jackson. You know, easy come, easy go. You've got to um, you, you, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Sometimes you make a good profit. Sometimes you don't, and uh, that's just the way that the market um, just the way the market moves. Is the stock market controlled to a to a certain degree? Yes, it is. Is it manipulated? Um, not legally. 
I think anybody who doesn't think that the market is manipulated, I mean, I sound like one of those crazy lunatic uh, conspiracy theorists, but there's there's certainly an element of uh, market manipulation goes on. We've seen that all, we've seen that uncovered uh, over the last uh, two three years, particularly with the whole uh, Wall Street bets debacle with GameStop and um, uh, and AMC and, and and the rest of the meme stocks with the uh, overshorting and some of the nefarious practices that go on with that with certain hedge funds. So there's, there's definitely some market manipulation does uh, does take place. Uh, but uh, is it is it widespread? Uh, not really. It's it's too difficult to um, to to manipulate the market in that way uh, for, the, for the benefit of the few. It's the odds are stacked in the benefit of the people with the big money anyway. Do, do people actually make uh, a living from the stocks? I do. I certainly do. And I make a better living from uh, from trading than, than I did in my uh, vice president role of a software company that um, I used to work, um, my executive position that I worked before, right before I started this. So what I would say is, is if you have, people can make a very, very lucrative, um, uh, a very lucrative living trading stocks. A lot of people, in fact, the majority of people actually lose money. And the reason they lose money is, is there's multiple factors, but uh, primarily it's threefold. First one is, is mindset, the approach with a gambling mindset. And if you come into the market with a gambling mindset, my advice is just, just go to Vegas. You know, put your, put your money on the crap table. Same mentality, same outcome. So like any other career, you've, you've got a certain skill set and you've got rules to obey so if you learn how to trade if you learn how to read the uh, read the markets you learn how to do technical analysis uh then you, you're giving yourself an edge um the other part is people don't have a strategy they, they enter the market and they throw money in there and I i'm as guilty as this as anybody because i did this in the startup they don't enter the market with a strategy so they they put the money in hoping that they will be able to read the signs and read the market and they don't follow a strategy and ultimately they lose so this is a, a, a second reason why a lot of people um, uh, lose money first one gambling mindset second one is is the lack of of documented um uh, authentic proven written strategy uh and and the last one is a, a poor approach to risk management so very often they will put all of the they will risk all of their collateral in a single trade, uh, and and then they end up going belly up. They wonder why they've blown up their account. And every trade you've got to a, a, approach every trade knowing full well that it can go against you. Losing it, it, being in a losing trade is 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 not a bad thing if you manage it right. You got to understand that you you can't be right all the time you can be right half the time and if you manage your, your risk effectively you're still going to make money so if you can accept the fact that you know you can have a 50 50 accuracy and half of your trades will go for you and half of your trades will go go against you you can still you can still be profitable but um the question is where do i learn all of that well check the first link out in my link tree How much per year? Well, different people earn different amounts. So I, I've targeted myself, well, I'm, I'm way off at the moment. I've targeted myself um, this year on seven figures of, of, of trading profits. Uh, last year, I was almost at 800K. Uh, didn't quite get there, but not far off. So I targeted myself, I gave myself an ambitious goal of, of um, seven figures this year. I'm behind. Basically, I'm, I'm behind down to this month. I'm, lo I'm losing. I'm in the red on May, but the first four months I was over three hundred thousand in profit. So I wasn't far off. Um, I wasn't far off.
<laughs> the trade for most people is to decrease the capital. Well, I can think of better ways, easier ways to do that, Jackson. Get divorced. That'll decrease your capital a lot quicker, trust me. <laughs> well, the spies moving in the right direction. We're almost green on the day. Little, just a little bit, a um, little bit further. No problem at all, fast gas. I think if you approach it with the right mindset, uh, you, you don't look at it as a, with a gambling mentality. You look at it like any other profession, like any other job. You, you invest in the right tools, you invest in the right platforms to trade, and, and, and you don't try and approach it with unrealistic expectations, then, and you're prepared to invest in the learning, then you there's every, every chance that you can become a profitable trader. If you're not prepared to invest in the right tools, in terms of the right scanners the right trading platform the, the right you, you know you've got to be able to invest a couple hundred bucks a month for the right tools to, to to trade profitably but also on top of that you've got to be able to invest in 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 yourself in terms of learning if you're not going to put the time in to learn the skills to be profitable then expect what the outcome is going to be it's going to be you're going to be a losing trader Hey Shando, welcome to uh, welcome back. Did you ever find your cat? Hey Black Eagle. Well, we've not started yet today. We're just waiting for some action. Data storage seems to be moving up nicely though. Yeah, Jackson, no problem. So I was um, I was regional vice president of a uh, a multinational software company. Uh, so I was I was responsible for the whole uh, European, Middle East, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. The, the whole revenue functionality of uh, of Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And uh, so I was responsible for the whole go to market. Now that particular company had several business units as well. So there was multiple different. Um, one was was more hardware based um some were cloud delivery service service delivery in the cloud some were just pure software so uh that's what i was doing previously a regional vice president of a of a software company now uh, due to the pandemic they decided to batten down the hatches and um not just myself but my entire team uh lost their as well Bar one, but he had a sideways move within the organization. But my entire team, um, uh, my entire team lost the, the, the jobs, and uh, there was no jobs to go but go to. Now, if you don't have multiple, so that, again, this is something I, I, I say to everybody the word job can be perceived as an acronym J O B, and the acronym is just over broke. It doesn't matter what salary you get. If you're a doctor, a lawyer, the high high price salary, you live to your means. So you're only ever just over broke. They say you're between three and five paychecks away from poverty. So if you lose your job and, and you, you've, you've got no insurance to, um, to, to to cover you, you've got no savings to cover you or, or whatever it is, you're between three and five paychecks uh, away from poverty, which is why you need to have multiple income streams. Don't just rely on your salary. If you're a salary, you're always going to be a slave to the salary. Whereas if you've got multiple income streams, you lose your job, you've, you're still solvent. You can you can still have um, you, you can still have an income. You can still have a quality of life whilst you're looking to replace that that stream of income. So absolutely you you need multiple streams of income now trading for me is my primary source of income I'm, i earn and when i say primary i don't do it all day every day but i have multiple streams of income so if i'm not trading i can still earn money and everybody needs to do that you all everybody needs to have a side hustle 
are multiple side hustles. You need to have a portfolio of investments. You need to have uh, savings that will, if you lose your salary, you need to have savings uh, for at least three months worth of, uh, of salary. So if you've got a job, let's say you, you, you're working whatever job it is and, and you're earning uh, two grand a month. Uh, I know that's quite a lot for a lot of people, but it's, it's not a lot for a lot of others. Let's say you're in two thousand dollars, uh, two thousand euros, two thousand pounds a month, two grand a month. You need at least six thousand in in savings just sitting there. That covers that two thousand a month for three months, because if you lose that income stream, you will need at least three months to find a replacement. So you need at least three months of savings just on the off shoot that you lose your job for whatever reason. So make sure that you've, A, you've got some savings set aside, and B, that you've got multiple streams of income. Oh, bless. Well, at least she's back there, Shando. Well, I guess now she she kind of got lost and um, she knows what what side her bread's buttered. She knows she had it good with you now. Probably looking for because they say cats are, have cupboard love. They'll they'll go, go they'll love whoever feeds them. Um, no, that's 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 great. So if you're trading. So, Learn how to learn how to trade the markets, whether that's investing, whether it's swing trading, whether it's day trading. Learn how to invest in the markets. Learn uh, learn finance. This is something they don't teach you in school, and I think is essential. Learn about money management. Learn about what is compounding and why is it important. Because these these are the secrets that the rich know and, and are taught from a very early age that we never learn about. And, and these rich people, they're not smart. They're not smarter than you or I. They just have this, this leg up the ladder, this advantage that we don't because they get to learn about the finance industry and, and money markets. And they get to learn about finance as a whole and how it works before we do. Now, if I'd known this back in my twenties, I'd, I'd, be, a, I'd be a set for life already now, you know? Um, fact that I've, I've kind of bootstrapped my way up from a, a council estate in Wigan uh, many years ago uh, to where I am today is a testament just purely to hard work and determination. But if I'd done, I knew now what I know 20 years ago, a lot of that hard work would have been needless. So I, I could have been able to earn more money for, for less sweat and, and, and toil and it reinvest that in other projects. And everybody needs to do that. And, the, and the, the sooner you start, the better it will be in the long term. So if you're a teenager now, you, you, you're still in college, you get an allowance, you've got your student loans, whatever, whatever it is. If you're at school or in college, start investing today. You know, buy some fractional shares of Bitcoin, buy some fractional shares of, of Amazon, whatever, and just let it sit. And next month, buy some more. Just let it sit. Don't touch it. Whatever you're getting, put 10% of it away and invest it in, in... Don't just put it in the savings account because that's just losing value. Put it away and, and let it grow because the compounding effect today, in 20, 30 years' time, you will really see the benefit. And if you do that every month and you just put 10% of you, your net disposable income, put 10% of it away, uh, and invest it somewhere and you don't take it out you just put it away and automate it if you can it makes it a lot easier and uh, in, in if you're a teenager or in your 20s you will have a very prosperous and lucrative middle to old age
Yeah, so I, I, I split from my my ex, um, Jackson. I split from my ex 2017, it would have been. So that's, what, five years ago now? And uh, it, it pretty much wiped me, even though I was earning a six-figure salary, a comfortable six-figure salary at the time, um, it pretty much wiped me out. I ended up with pretty much nothing. So having to start from scratch and build up again meant that, you know, you've... Um, gives you a little bit more determination but then when i lost my when i lost my job and again i i, I emphasize the word job j-o-b just over broke when i lost that position and, and it was a good i enjoyed the role don't get me wrong but i was always working i, I didn't really have a life even though i was traveling I was traveling all over the world I'll be in Dubai one week, I'll be in Munich another week, I'll be in London, Dublin, over in Miami. I, I was doing a lot of traveling, but it's not as glamorous as, as people may think it is. But it, it doesn't, it, it's not as glamorous as it sounds anyway. And um, it has its physical toll as well. When you're doing that much traveling, uh, I was never in one place, I couldn't have the dog. Before, I didn't have a dog before the before the pandemic. You, you couldn't stay in one place that that long, and and that was part. A big part of that was um, what put some strain on my relationship previously as well was the, a lot of the traveling. But it has a physical toll on you. And then when you're not traveling, when I'm just sat here in in, in Dublin, I'm either in the office or, or working from home. Because HQ is in Miami, I'm taking I'm having you know management meetings and management calls online till kind of. 10 30 11 o'clock at night and then i'm up the next morning for calls with a, a distributor or or you know businesses that were partners in in dubai or or U, 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 uae um around product launches or exhibitions and things and uh, i'm up at six o'clock on a, on a conference call with them so it was like extremely taxing physically so the fact that I get up in the morning, do some little bits and pieces on a, on a couple of my businesses, and have my lunch, uh, there's no there's, there's no rush in my life anymore. There's there's no hustle in my life to do things. So I take the dog out in the morning for her, for her first walk. I'm gonna come back in and I've had my lunch. Uh, I then start preparing for for the trading day. Um, normally I would be I would start about now. About an hour before the, the market opens is what I would normally do. But since I started this stream in February, since I started streaming live on, on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter and TikTok, uh, I open it a little bit earlier and, and we have the conversations and, you know, I, I'm doing a little bit more than perhaps I, I, I would need to do if I was just concentrating on trade. Now, of course, I do have the, the education course, which came about as a result of people watching me trade wanting to learn what i do and requesting that i teach them now there's only so much time i have in the day even though it is my time so i recorded all the lectures and i built out a course for people to learn from and um i'm adding to that on a regular semi-regular basis uh building out additional courses to 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 complement that so i'll have the day trading course i'll have a swing trading course I'll have the crypto, I'll have the investing, the value investing, uh, and, and, and just kind of build it out to, to be a, a fully comprehensive um, uh, education, if you will. So people learning to earn money like I'm doing, that, that's, that's, that's a good thing. And I'm, I'm not trying to fleece anybody for um, something I'm not actually going if you stick around and watch me trade and, and you can actually learn a lot of what i'm doing for free I'm, I'm giving a lot of information for free on the stream so that's not a problem if you want it all condensed in an area with a, a, a plan then go and buy the course and you get the mentorship as well so data storage is having a good time what about spirit Spirit Airlines is, is consolidating. Arrows consolidating, low volume. So data storage seems to be the one that's uh, having the best time this morning at the moment. We're watching data storage, DTST. 
Let's have a look at Mantec International, which has just hit the scanners. I want to see why. Right, okay. That's an acquisition. So Carlisle, former employer of mine, indirectly. The Carlisle Group agrees to acquire Mantec International for $4.2 billion. So that won't lead to very much. So Carlisle Group used to bought Veritas Technology from Symantec back in the day and I ended up working for Veritas Technology under the stewardship of Carlisle. Now Carlisle have a history of buying a company, stripping it of its assets and um, making it not very slimlining the company shall we say stripping it of its assets for for profit and then then streamlining the company so making it a lot smaller a lot more agile than, than what it is so they take um what's the expression that i heard them described they have a history of taking bloated whales and turning them into an agile dolphin i would go to say as they have a history of loading a company with debt stripping it of its assets and hoping it can turn around. It certainly didn't with Veritas anyway. Where do you, where do you get the course? Um, if you go to my profile and double click on my face, swipe left, whichever way you want to do it, go to my profile, click the link, which is the, the TikTok trader link, and the first link in the link tree, if it, bring, it might bring to a splash screen, just go through that. But um, the first, uh, the first link in the um, in the in the link tree uh, is is my course. Data storage. Having a good day today. It's currently 48% up on the day. A little bit of a consolidation period here. Three forty-five might be a decent entry. I'm not offering financial advice. Remember that. And I'll stop picks or signals. The stream is delayed, so if don't please don't try to follow me blindly. My results are not typical of the average trader. So learn how to trade. Don't try to follow me but blindly. The, the, what you see me doing has already happened, has already taken place. Well, you're always welcome, Jackson. We, are, we can always welcome, uh, we always welcome more people to the community that, that can help. The more experience we have in the community, the better. We're building out a little, we've got a private Discord as part of the course. We're building out the community where we all share um, share our, our experiences as well just helps everybody get better it's, it's, it's much easier to learn when you know you're not on your own going through that uh, going through that process you of course you have me mentoring and, and coaching but knowing that there's other people in the same uh, at the same level as you and, and in the same maybe some people a little bit ahead of you even um but it, it, it helps uh just knowing that there are other people going through the same process just makes it a lot easier. 
and everybody makes the same mistakes. Everybody goes through similar a similar phase. Double doji there is usually a sign of a reversal. So we've come up, it looks like we might get a bit of a sell, a bit of a pullback here. So I'll wait for the next five minute candle. So the next five minute candle is 44. Uh, it's funny you should say that, uh, Superpower. It didn't make a new high there, um, not very well trained. I was I was considering it, but it didn't actually make a new high. So the 840, 841 candle, um, it didn't actually make a new high. Uh, and I, I want that confirmation. Yes, we've got the, the volume coming through here at, at, um, on the... 839 candle then we've got descending volume but that first that pullback there i was looking i was looking at it but it didn't actually make it break the new high so that's um that's why i didn't enter i would have i was thinking about it but i'm getting a little bit of a pullback consolidation pullback that now those dojis um are usually an indication of that superpower workout what do i think about luna crypto will it come back i don't think so but just speculatively, instead of buying a pizza on Saturday, I watched the football, had a few beers with friends and stuff. Instead of going out, we was going to get a pizza. Instead of buying a pizza, I decided to cook. Uh, and uh, the 20 euros that I would have paid for the pizza, I went and bought $25 worth of um, of Luna instead. I thought, oh, why not? What's the worst that could happen? It, it can go to zero. Uh, well, that $25 on Saturday evening is now $11. So... <laughs> um, it was only 70,000 um, 70, lunars. Now, each of those lunars a couple of weeks ago was worth 100 bucks. Uh, so I, I was thinking, it's not going to go to 90 again. They've, they've, pumped, they've minted too many in the meantime. So you've been looking, if it goes to, if it goes to 10 cents, it's going to, uh, it's going to strip, outstrip Bitcoin in terms of market cap, the, the, the Bitcoin's current market cap. So it's not going to go back to a dollar. Maybe, maybe it comes back. Maybe it doesn't. I don't care right now. With the, I've got, I just paid twenty five quid. I thought it's 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 pittance money. Um, I don't believe in Luna. I don't think the the retail public believe in Luna. The they've completely lost. Terra Luna's completely lost its um, credibility. So. I don't believe it will come back, but just on a, a gambling situation, I thought twenty-five quid instead of a um, instead of a uh, a pizza, I'll put twenty-five quid on Luna, and if it comes back, I'll be quids in. I'll, I'll have you know maybe a hundred hundred grand or something, and a kick in the teeth. But I've just put twenty-five quid into Luna and, and forgot about it. Well, not forgot about it, but I'm not even bothered looking at it. I'll just when I read the headlines and I'll read that Luna is at such and such a level, then I'll take a look. But until it gets close to a cent, or a penny again, uh, I'm not I'm not even bothered, interested in in thinking about it. Well, I'm glad I didn't take that candle at. Um, Not very well. I'm glad I didn't take the 841 candle, as you can see. Waiting for the confirmation is important. So we're looking for the candle to make a new high. The high of the 841 candle was uh, 43. And then the following three candles were also, they reached the same high, they never broke it. But two of them were dojis, which are a typical reversal signal. Now this is pulling back to the VWAP. So I want to see a bounce on the VWAP. Now, I will look at the next candle to make a new high here because we've had this move up and we potentially can get a, a, another move up here. So the high of this candle right now is 35. It, exactly, it's never happened before. I don't know what, um, I don't know what they're going to do with it, Jackson. 
is is there going to be some kind of um, official intervention to try and repeg the um, repeg terror? I, I don't know. Is there going to be a bailout? If it was a bank, if it happened to a bank or a hedge fund, you guaranteed there'd be a bailout. I don't know. It's never happened before. It's we're into new territory. Morning, NASA. So you know. Let's see what happens with uh, with Luna, and um, if they do if they do fork it, hi. We'll see. I've got uh, two thousand Luna there. Hey, how you doing? No, I, I just think if, if you can afford right now the way Luna is, I think it's down at. Um, you know, fractions of a penny right now. It's in it's in the realms of Shiba Inu value right now per per coin. So if you've not got a ten quid, I mean ten, twenty, thirty quid just to gamble on. on I'm not saying I'm not advocating gambling, but because of the history of Luna, the, the history of crypto, the the historic gains and all this kind of stuff. If um if you've got a spare twenty, thirty quid. Just go and buy some Luna. Get yourself onto Binance or whatever platform you like, and and just buy, you know, scores worth of Luna. See what happens. I'm not shilling. I'm not saying it's a good idea. It's not investment advice. It's a gamble. That's exactly what it is. Well, we just got a new candle to make a new high. I didn't see it. We didn't get a huge volume coming through on it anyway, so probably best I didn't take it. But let's see if we get um, if we get a move up. High is thirty three. Not got the volume on Veru, or else I will be looking at that. Um, Spirit Airlines is is about to undergo a an aggressive takeover bid. May get some. A bit of an auction, Dutch auction going on there. So let's see, keep an eye on Spirit Airlines, which is S A V E. Save. Uh, but at the moment, the biggest performer pre market is um, is data storage. SoFi is up as well, seven seven percent up. Oh, I'll, I'll take a little position there. That should have filled me on the last candle, not this candle, but. But that's the way I looked at it, um, Jackson. I, I thought about it exactly the same way. I thought, do you know what? I don't need to eat a pizza. I could afford a, I could have afforded both. Of course I could. But it was just the rather than so in my eyes, I've not spent anything. I just I just saved a few calories instead of uh, eating pizza. I, I got you know 70, 70, 000 lunar or something. Yeah, well, I got in. I got in for the new high, but it, we've not got the range yet. So I'm waiting for it. I'm, I'm holding it. Got it at 34. So I'm, I'm going to hold it for for 330. Give it four cents risk. Oh, I'm looking for 45. Actual new highs up here. We want, we want to reach that high of day before I take profits. But I'm, I'm, I'll get out at, at 30. So that's that's my trade plan on um, on DTST on this this particular trade but I'm not going in big size just yet the volume's not there for me to go in big size just a thousand shares let's see if we can, see if we can get some base hits and get 11 cents that's over 100 bucks so well there you go um Jackson, if Luna moons, not only have you saved, um, not only have you made some money, you've actually um, improved your health as well. Superpower workout. Uh, if you've got 10k to invest, I would say invest it. 
don't put any money into the stock market from a day trading perspective that you're not prepared to lose most people who day trade regardless of the instrument lose money over 95 if you include all instruments which includes forex crypto futures commodities everything over 95 percent of people who get involved in day trading lose money long term so don't invest don't put money in that you're not prepared to lose that's the first thing the second thing is don't put money in until you've learned how to trade so that includes learning a strategy practicing in a simulator and learning how to become profitable once you've proven in a simulator paper trading with with fake money if you will once you've learned in a simulator and you've been consistently profitable for at least six to eight weeks then try and put money in small size 10k can you make if you're a good trader with a 10k starting balance can you make good money yes you can i took a five thousand just under five thousand dollars in february uh on february the first and by february 28th um i had seventy eight thousand dollars in the account in april I lost a bit at the beginning of April, so we um, we lost. We had thirty thousand dollars at the beginning of April, and we we lost quite a bit to the point where I had four thousand two hundred dollars at forty two hundred dollars in the account. By the end of that, we had over sixty thousand dollars in in the account. So we had over sixty five thousand dollars in the account. So it went from four thousand two hundred to over sixty thousand dollars. So yes, you can make money it, on a monthly basis. You can make good money if you're prepared to put the work in, if you're prepared to learn the skill and be patient, not have unrealistic expectations. Now, I will caveat that by saying my results are not typical. Not everybody makes the gains that I can make. Not everybody's aggressive the way that I am. And not everybody should be as aggressive the way that I am. But yes, if you approach it, with the right mindset and, and the right mentality and a proven winning strategy and you stick to the strategy and have the discipline to stick with the strategy, then yes, you can earn good money. It, my expectation, well, my, my question is, what expectations do you have on that 10K? If you are looking to make, if you want to make 500 bucks a day, which is two and a half thousand a week, that's 25% a week, um, is that realistic on a $10,000 account? Well, I would say if you're a good trader, yes. If you're a beginner trader, I would say bring your expectations down a little bit. A little bit. Maybe look at $100 a day, which is $500 a week. Off a $10,000 off a, off a $10, um, account, 20, average 20 day trading days in a, in a month, you make 20% per month, which is far outstripping the, um, the market. So if you're, if you're prepared to learn how to trade um, superpower, you can make good money. Quick money, if you're in, for, in it for quick gains, if you're in it to uh, thinking that you're going to get rich quick overnight, Get yourself off to um, get yourself off to Vegas. Put your money on the uh, the uh, the blackjack table. That kind of mentality, that kind of um, gambling mentality, is why the majority of people who day trade lose money. Hey Paul, broadband's connected. Absolutely. Yeah, I did lose a lot this month, uh, Marion. You're absolutely right. I'm, I'm in the hole this month to the tune of $40,000 at the moment. I'm red on May to the tune of $40,000. And I, I don't try to hide that from anyone for obvious reasons. It serves as a warning that the markets are risky. But overall, I'm still profitable on the year over $300,000. So... I have every intention of going green on May as well. So let's let's see. Absolutely, Les. Absolutely. 
mindset, the emotional element, the psychological element of trading is the biggest hurdle uh, superpower. Learning the strategy, learning how to read charts, learning how to spot areas of support and resistance, learning the patterns and, and the breakouts and what certain patterns are signaling and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's all academic. That can be taught in in a few hours, a few days, however quick that you learn. That can all be taught. The emotional element, the psychological element, that only comes with practice. It's like it's like going to the gym and seeing somebody bench bench pressing 240 pounds. And you're like, you're a nine stone weakling. You've never been in the gym before in your life. You think, I want to bench press 240 pounds. See, it looks easy. What that, that what he's doing there? He's just lying down and pushing that barbell up. That's easy. I can do that. And you get on there and nearly die. But you can do it. You just got to condition yourself. You've got to train and build yourself up to that. And that's that's the, the same thing with um, with trading. The emotional element is what I'm talking about. Emotional and, and, and the psychological element. That comes with training yourself. Practice. Now, you can practice as much as you want in a simulator, but it's not going to replicate, replicate the emotional element that, that you have when there's money involved. So when you do get money involved, always start small. Never risk more than you can afford to lose. Steam's very, it should be steady. I've got fiber to the door um, as of Friday afternoon there, Jack. I'm hoping that that will make a difference. I'm blaming, uh, on Friday, I blame the um, the stream because for, for, for my losing trades because I've effectively been a losing trader since I moved into this new apartment when I've been trading on, on mobile data. Uh, so now I've got fiber to the door. I'm going to say, look, it was it was the tools all along. It was the connectivity. Are you back? You come in for a pet? Is that what you come in for? You're, you're in for a chow chow. You're a proper, proper needy bear. Now come away over. You come on this side. Come on this side over here. If you want petting, you need to come on this side. Because that's where the tripod is, and I don't want you moving the camera. There you go. I'll pet you with my left hand. But again, he wouldn't have done that overnight. He might do it in in in, in eighteen months, uh, Marion, which is great. You know, he might do it in eighteen months, but he's not going to do it overnight. And anybody thinking that they can make a million overnight, or or in a month, or in in two months, off a ten k base, is 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 in for a rude awakening. Because what they'll do, rather than make a million, they'll lose ten k. Oh, so, patience and and discipline are essential traits for any profitable trader well the biggest the biggest day i've had marion was was last um october uh D, trading dwac and puhn somewhere and um dwac and i made uh Across those trade, those two stocks trading the warrants and a couple of others besides, in a single day, I managed to make $102,000 worth of profit. Now there were big swings in that day. Uh, what I mean by big swings, there were swings to the upside and swings to the downside because it was extremely volatile. But $102,000 in a day, I've never been able to replicate that since. I'm, I'm close, I'll say close, I've got about 60% of that. But that for me was um, psychologically a, a, a big turning point to say, look, I could easily make seven figures in a year trading. If I can do 100,000 in a day, granted that's not a normal day, it's an exceptional day, but if I can do $100,000 in a day, then a, a million dollars a year is, is more than realistic.
An exorcism? Oh, have you seen uh, is the ghosts behind me, Alistair? Have you seen ghosts that I'm not seeing? So I've just I've just been holding this um this particular trade since I took it a few minutes ago. We got in at 3.34, said I'd risk four cents to make um to make eleven. We've not quite got up to 3.45 yet. I'm on data storage at the moment. DTST is the top uh, the top mover. That's what I'm on at the moment. I'm also looking at Spirit Airlines, which is S-A-V-E. That's on my watch list. I've got a watch list of three at the moment. And uh, uh, and Veru again for a continuation. Now, these are not stock picks. I'm not saying go out and buy these. I'm not saying that these are good, good stocks to buy right now or invest in. What I'm saying is that these are the stocks that I'm watching that I potentially might day trade at some point today. That's all. And good morning to you as well, Box. I just went in small. Well, I say small. I went in for a thousand shares with um, with uh, with DTST as it was moving up. As we made new highs, first candle to make a new high. It's when I pulled the trigger. And did I miss the peak? Oh no, I didn't. Oh, I got in here, but I didn't. I got in here. No break even. Slightly up. Well, I think if, if it's not so much advice, it's, it's a lot of people get into trading with unrealistic expectations. They see, you know, Johnny Fake Trader on YouTube making millions of dollars uh, in, in, on a single trade. What they don't realize is it's not even his money. It's not even real money. He's trading a paper account and he's, he's just recording it when he managed to make gains on a given day and then post it on YouTube video. He doesn't do anything live, he doesn't show any live trades. He doesn't tell you how he did it, he just says, look at how much I did it. There we go, I'll get out there. So we just made 160 bucks with that trade. But what, what, what they're doing is they're setting unrealistic expectations. They'll hire a Ferrari, go down to Miami, they'll, they'll hire a Lamborghini for, you know, 150 bucks for the day or whatever it is, or 400 bucks for the day. Uh, and they'll t get a photo shoot and, and then they'll make all this, this look at me, look, I'm really living the lifestyle. And, and the, the truth is what you've got is what's known as these, these uh, 30 grand millionaires. They've got all of this bling and expensive lifestyle and if they really had the money they wouldn't need to flex simple most people that i know and i know quite a lot of multi-millionaires and a couple of billionaires um they they don't flex you know my, my previous ceo used to come to dublin and the one thing that we used to do was we'd, we'd take him down to um conor mcgregor's gym the gym where Conor McGregor started off his MMA. He's big into his MMA, so he'd, he'd go, have an, go and have a fight in the um, in, in in the MMA. Go and have a workout, sparring session. So he he didn't have, you know, he. I mean, he is absolutely mega minted, but he didn't have. Um, he wasn't on show with 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 flash cars and and you know expensive jewelry and bling around the nets and gold braces and things like that you know it, it, it's what i call a low key flex yes i am all right we get back into this we've just made 160 quid so that's how much we can risk without crying So we're, we're just breaking off. We're breaking uh, session highs. Where's my trading view? Just want to have a quick look at this on trading view for some DTST. I'll see this on the daily. Let's do a bit of 
background on this. Alright. Why have I not got my... Got to put my um, free market data on there. Right, okay, well, so we're getting into the realms of the half dollar level, so they've got quite a bit of resistance at the half dollar on this one. So let's watch this because historically over the last uh, last couple of months got quite a lot of resistance at the half dollar That's what I like about trading view it's um absolute Marion I mean you can't learn it's it's like you, you've hit the nail on the head with that one. It is is that you see gifted traders who are, you know, they they see the guys who have years and years of experience, as you say, and want to like they like them in just a month after you know not putting any time and effort to to educate themselves. Um, but a big thing about that, the, the analogy that I've used on this stream before, the, the analogy that I, I continue to use is trading is is like it's a career like any other. And it requires certain skills and certain knowledge skills and knowledge that you can pick up and that you can that you can learn absolutely but you've got to put the time in to do that and you've got to invest in yourself to do that now if you walked into a dentist to get one of your teeth filled um to have a root canal and you saw him there with a black and decker uh you probably run out of the dentist and, and, and never go back because, you know, a Makita drill, he's not using the right tools for the job. Secondly, if somebody else in the working room saw the guy with the proper tools for the job and said, look, I can do that, and walks over, takes them off him, would you let him dr drill on your teeth? He's, he's just watched this guy doing it, thinks it's easy. Would you let him drill on your teeth? No, you wouldn't. Same thing. To be proficient at any profession, you have to put the they say it takes a thousand hours of practice to become an expert actually a thousand or, or ten thousand but it's a thousand hours of practice to become an expert so you need to put those those hours in now if you put a thousand hours in a simulator when you get out of the simulator the likelihood is you'll have a, a certain degree of proficiency it doesn't mean that you're going to be profitable, but you'll have a better chance of being profitable than you will who uh, somebody who then just puts money into the market skips the simulator practice session and just thinks that they can trade the um uh, the strategies that they've read up on uh, out of a book or, or watch somebody tell them on youtube you've got to be willing to put the time in to learn and practice why is arc down what did the didn't they just make a purchase of um gm what was it gm motors no it wasn't Arc. that was um buffett Let me have a look. I'll tell you exactly what my thoughts are on, on ARC. Which one are you looking at? That's only down slightly. I mean, we're talking, you know, half a percent. It's following the wider market. Lil Hinny. It's, it's in line with the wider market. So it's an ETF that, that pretty much follows the S&P. Yeah. There's no, there's no specific news about ARK Invest, but... She tends to invest in the um, in the S and P, so 
<laughs> like likewise um yes her, her stock will follow the s p I mean, if you look at, let's go back to ARK, ARK Invest. So you've got ARK Invest. Look at this. I mean, forget the fact that it's a low, low volume. Let me just uh, put it on the five minute to make it a little, little bit easier or even on the hourly. So this is the 60 minute. This is this is ARK Invest. Um, it's an ETF. Let's put it on against the, the NASDAQ. That's pretty much the same chart. So you put it against the the, the, the the triple Q, which is another ETF that follows the NASDAQ. Um, the SPY, it's the same chart. So it's just following the market right now. Oh, dear. Missed my entry. That's okay. Beirut had a little bit of a pop I saw. Well, Michael will be happy if it's over 323 when he comes back. Yeah, no problem at all. That's not the one that you're looking for. better for you doesn't, it actually doesn't need to be that big just yet so I'm just gonna reduce its size a little bit for you I only had it that big because it was put down there. You can see more of the actual thing. But up. Exactly, Marion. I mean, what is it? Uh, the footballer Sadio Mane was uh, was spotted with a, a broken iPhone. It was, I think it was an iPhone Seven or something. And someone was like, Ooh, and it cracked screen. And someone was like, Why don't you get a new phone? You can afford it. He's like, Well, why should I? This phone works fine. You know. No need to be buying liabilities so looking for the break of 360 Just got 360 there. That's what I'm looking for. The move up. A little bit bigger this time. Oh, risk 10 cents. Take a little bit off. Got my 10 cents. Oh. Well, I, I've, I've been starting the week off with the green trade pre-market pretty much every week, and then the um, then the bell rings, and I've uh, I've gone in big size and and baked out. That's that's been the um, repetitive thing over the last probably three or four weeks, is I've I've got in for a breakout of 
pre-market highs and it, it'll break out and then reverse and cost me. So I just need to um, need to change that. I mean, the, th the thing is, with the bear market, with, when we've had these moves to the upside, we've not had the follow through. We've been struggling for volume over the last probably two weeks as well. And I've been taking trades that really I shouldn't have taken because they've not really had the, the relative volume that, that I would normally look for. Uh, I'm normally looking for relative volume of at least 3x, 2x as a minimum, but you're looking for 3x or better. And a lot of these trades I've taken over the last while, even on big big size, I've taken more out of um, more like boredom trades than anything. Uh, I make more money on the gap and goal strategy than I do on any other strategy that I employ. And we've not had the gappers pre-market to facilitate the gap and goal. So I've been looking at momentum strategy. And it's it's probably in May it's it's not gone my in my way. I'm being completely honest. But that's okay, look. It's 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 Fagoozy, as they say. Until I come to try and take money out, it's Fagoozy. At the end of this month, I've not lost anything until I get to the end of the month and realize I've got no profits to take out. But absolutely, Marion. I don't live in a mansion. You'll not buy a mansion in Dublin for 300k, that's for sure. Mortgage on this bloody place is um, bad enough. Actually, I was paying more for the rent on the last place than I'm paying the mortgage on this one. Trading your own funds is always difficult. There's more emotions in it. If you're trading someone else's funds, then you're kind of thinking, if I lose, what's the worst that can happen? I'd get sacked. Someone will fire me. Actually, I saw an advocate, obviously, because my interests are um, are trading and day trading and investing and stuff. I got an advert on, on Facebook, I think it was. Um, Nick Leeson. Does anybody remember Nick Leeson? Caused a, uh, a stock market crash a, a, a good few years ago. Bering's Bank, he called, caused Bering, Bering's Bank to fail. He's now got a stock trading course. And I'm thinking, you're doing that under your own name, Nick Leeson. I know, I know you was trading big money for, for Bering's Bank, but you bankrupted a bank, for crying out loud. You brought the whole world to its knees on the stock market. And, and you, you expect people to pay for your course? So you need to get out of that that mentality, Roberts. Don't leave the sim until you you're okay with losing. I'm just going to get out of this trade. So don't leave the sim until you're okay um, with making a loss. You've got to realise that you cut your losses, uh, a, a, a small losses. So I've made three hundred and sixty-five dollars today, which is um, which is which is for me. I'm, I'm, it's a happy start. Uh, so you don't leave the you, you don't leave the sim until you've uh, in, in, until you've found that you can be okay with making a losing trade. You've got to understand that every trade you take has a has a probability that it can go against you. As pattern as pattern breakout traders, as, I'm a pattern breakout trader primarily. As a pattern breakout trader, 
I want to have an edge in my favor that it's going to go in my favor, but it's never 100%. So 70, 80% is going to be a great, a, a, a great percentage. My accuracy over, over the last year is, is about 60, 65%. Look at my trading view stats, trader view stats. Just pull it up. So the start of January, not, not including um, last year, because I had a really good year last year. So I've got a 66% winning rate at the moment in terms of the trades I take this year. Uh, my risk reward is is kind of break even at the moment. It's, it's one to one, and I need to I need to get that better, but that's largely down to this month. And two big trades that I made um, I made losses on last month. A profit a profit factor on on according to uh, Trade View is one point eight. So for every dollar I put into the market, I'm getting 1.8 back. So my my stats are actually at the moment really, really good. This year, not if I, if I look at this month, it's the complete opposite. My stats are actually re reverse. I'm, I'm a losing trader in May at the moment. Um, the idea is to to um, turn that around. ETST is the main. And we've got quite a bit of. Look at this on the daily. See, we've got not much resistance after after four dollars. Not much resistance at all. Up to five. And as you can see, I've traded this previously last year. God, I traded this last year uh, above five dollars. So where we are right now, four dollars is really the next resistance, severe resistance level. Then we're looking at the half dollar level, and then up to five. So we've not got a lot of resistance after four dollars, up to five. But if we can break four dollars, this could you could have a little bit of a run today. Yeah, we're just waiting for the bell now. Where is break even? Might come good later. Spirit Airlines is under the VWAP, so I'm just kind of watching this at the bell. Data storage. I have day right now is 381. Well, before we get to the bell, I'm just going to buy or break so I'm not interrupted when the action starts. Sixty seconds, sixty-five seconds to go. Oh no, we're about to. Um, here we go. There's the market. I was a minute behind.
Faru dumping. Spirit dumping. I'll change the scanners over quickly. High of this candle is 77, the opening range. 17 cent range at the minute. Very making a move to the upside now. I don't know what you're talking about using, I don't think you do either, but you do you, boo boo. No, you're all right. Why don't Why don't you get live and and show people live that you what how you trade user, like I do. Put your money where your mouth is. All about different people have different strategies, and different tools for the job. Platform I'm using has given me enough profit for me to be comfortable. And uh, unless you can show me that I'm doing it wrong by showing me how you're doing it right, you're just another troll in the chat. Yeah, just another troll in the chat. have quite a few like you buddy a lot of talking but not much action Spreads here are a bit rangy. Three cents, four cents. Resistance at the three quarter dollar level now.
looking for the gap and go, but it didn't go. Got. Oh, still trying to get that three quarter dollar level. The longer I'm in this, the less likely it is. the snoring snoring chair that you can hear Drops in it below the view up, we get out. There we go. Drop the view up. Let's go back to very. Very was good for us on Friday. Let's see if he's going to be good for us today. Half off there. Stop there at break even. Give it up. Get a profit out of this half as well. Oh, here we go. I've got a troll in the chat. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm going to try and sell us one of those um, algorithmic trading bots that lose money every time you try and put money on them. Just made 700 bucks on that trade. Well, no, you don't. You've never made a you never made a cent in your life. You're just on here trolling, thinking that we're going to take um, take your word for it. Back it up with some evidence. I back my trading up every single day. Got my PL posted on um, 
on the course that I that I teach people how to trade profitably. So uh, unless you can back it up, you're just a troll on the internet, oh, pal. But thanks for the um, thanks for the engagement. It works well with the algorithm. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. The more you comment, the more it helps me. So keep it coming. Hey, Rich, how you doing? DTST is back below the VWAP now. Spy's not quite green on the day, but it's above the VWAP. Spirit never did anything. Right, where else is, where else is moving? Rattler. Let me have a look at Rattler midstream. AMC. It's an acquisition. Okay, AMC, I'll have a look for you. Oh, having a nice little pop. Zoom out on the five minute. Now oh, we just broke highs. High of day. It's 12.14. Just broke that. Look for a pullback. Not a huge volume for AMC at the minute. In terms of relative speaking. Normally getting a um, lot more volume. It's starting to come in a bit. Markets are a bit choppy at the minute, but they're not as aggressively downward as they were last week. Just, I mean, if it's if the markets are choppy, just sit it out. You don't have to tra you take a trade. Here we go. AMC is now pulling back. You don't have to take a trade, and if you don't take a trade, you don't lose any money. But, you know, sometimes the best trade is the one you don't take. Yeah, I was looking at SoFi um, pre-market. And uh, it's down on the VWAP right now. It's just over seven dollars. So here's SoFi. It's five percent up on the day. It's uh, bouncing on the VWAP at the minute. We had this initial kind of VWAP bounce. It didn't take off, but it's, it's back down towards uh, towards the VWAP. That's your SoFi. AMC looks to be a better option right now. I'm going to swap that out my visual watch list I'm looking for Varu to make a, a turnaround DTST is trying to make a turnaround let's have another look at this let's see it break the VWAP maybe test it as support and then move up to break the half dollar Now, so so far, it's not. It had a little moment there for about four or five minutes, where you know it's it's not gapping up that much. It's not looking that strong. We've got a lot of sideways movements at the moment, so wait for the market to decide which way it's going. Yeah, I I, I think I called Agri out in the um, in the Discord there, Paul. 
Slow and steady is the way to do it, Shandor. Base hits. Don't go reaching, don't go swinging for the fences when the, the setups aren't there. Well, if you've got um, if you've got the catalyst and you think it's uh, in a, a trend, then go for it, Rich. Spy dumping. There we go. Said watch for the markets to make its mind. Which why we just had a bit of a vomit. So it's spy dumping. Nasdaq following suit. And small cap index, the Russell index, also um, also jumping. I'm actually really liking this neighborhood I'm in, mean, so. Yeah, they're all taking a hit at the minute. So let's... AMC trying to... Okay. AMC now, since it's gathered kind of mainstream uh, notoriety, does tend to follow the, the direction of the market as well, if it doesn't have a, its own catalyst. GME the same. That's, this is exactly the same far, um, pattern of the wider market. But that troll that was just in the chat probably would say that the the, uh, the wider markets don't impact small stocks, or, or you know penny stocks or, or, or low cap stocks. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. So yeah, let me have a look. What's the relative volume? Cornerstone. Uh, not too bad. Volume's not not too bad. Selling back now. Pulling back now. Right. Let's have a look at the halts have we got any get rid of the price spikes now gbdf that's the only halt there's no trade there. It's a firm doing in my list. Baru trying to get back above 13. Needs to before I'm going to trade it again. ETST looking to make, make another move up. Missed my entry. Looking for the break of, of the half dollar. Get in there. Risking eight cents. Pulls back and breaks the VWAP. Don't mind it pulling back to test, but if it pulls back and breaks the VWAP, we get it. But Wick doesn't care. Oh, 600 bucks a day. If we get 500 bucks a day, if you get $500 profit a day, just just think of it this way. 500 a day is 2,500 uh, $2, a week. 20 trading days in a month, that's a six-figure income. So if you're targeting yourself on 500 a day, that's it's not a bad income. 
$120,000 a year. The average household income in, in the US is $42,000. The average income in the UK is £32,000. That's household income. And most households have two incomes. So put that into, uh, into perspective. Sixty-five. Five, the high on the five minute here is sixty-four. Looking for the next count to make a new high. So if I was making a move up again, it's back above the VWAP. In fact, the AMC is about to break highs. AMC is about to break highs, 1220s. for this amateur setup, this this amateur bull flag setup that I'm about to um potentially flat potential flat top if this gets up to 64 again. Amusing when you get trolls coming into the stream professing to know more than the, the, the host of the stream but without backing it up with any facts. But each to their own. Entertaining. Huh. AMC. Breaking new highs. Now I've got to look for. Half dollar it was uh, pre market high Friday, it's twelve forty nine. Spirits just had a lovely double, double bottom. Let's just have a look at this. Look at this nice double bottom setup. Been paying attention, we could have got in on that. W. What, what do I know? I'm an amateur. Trading amateur patterns. <laughs> Who else spotted the um, Spirit Airlines double? Did anybody else spot the double bottom on Spirit Airlines? Scanners just disappeared off my chart. All right, Havana, EVNA. Why is this moving up? That's the question. AWVs hitting the five minute scanners. Low low volume now. Just 
just analyst ratings, need them, need them ratings, it looks like. Making a nice move though. Let's look for the high of that candle, 28. AMC. Will we break the half dollar? Nice too. for this to make new highs volume would help I'm not seeing a huge volume in AMC, AMC today for some reason the um the apes usually have my back Be quiet with your snoring. Nasdaq, it's down on the day. It's, it's um, choppy at the minute. The wider markets are all a bit choppy at the minute. All down on the dead, slightly below the VWAP. Oh well, get out it. Breaks 12.20, I'll get it. This candle to make a new low. see consolidating here after that initial move up not really going in the way I want it to so just think I'm just going to get out feeling that uh, right before it dumps I like that that's that's uh, AMC to the moon it's not going to the moon today on the five minutes so on the five minute we're getting this lower highs higher lows so we need, we need it to make up uh, we need it to make up its mind looking at ETST maybe for another move back up
back to AMC later if it uh, if it starts to move. And someone was looking at the Nasdaq. There's your, there's your Nasdaq breaking lows. So we we're hoping for a uh, either a sideways day or ideally a bit of a rally, but it's breaking lows. What's my scalping method? I'm not really scalping as such, but if I'm scalping, I basically look to ride the momentum up, take profits, and exit at the first candle to make a new lot. I'm more of a, I'm not so much a scalper as a as a pattern breakout trader, a pattern pattern trader. So, scalping is everybody's ally. The thing is with scalping, it's best done with um, with a, a zero commission account if you can get one. Because if you're scalping, you're in and out very quickly, small small gains, multiple times. It's not as easy as you think, but small gains, multiple times, uh, they add up. But if you're doing it with um, a, a broker that charges you know, reasonable commissions uh, and you get other fees on top of that, you can end up racking up transaction fees, scalping that just wipe out your profits. No, I don't know, Tino. I'm really trying to make a move back up. I want to see it above 13. I'll fade it again. Height risk here. Or 37. Our exit. Don't mind the, the, the VWAP being there. Ideally, I want to see it up to the the half dollar. Make the move up. Dollar now, two and a half thousand shares. Stop. Five thousand shares now. market high that's the question Oh, 
stop there at 366. I'm waiting for this to move up. Try and break the three. Okay. Slow and steady today, it looks like. Hey, cash flow, how you doing? Uh, I'm not trading forex, um, Tumza. I'm trading stock. So this one is um, uh, DTST. It's, it's Data Storage, is the uh, is the company Data Storage Corporation. So we're currently 890 in profit on the day so far. Slow and steady today. So steady. Roblox should be trading uh, in line with the wider market. I'll have a look for you while I'm not in a trade. Actually, Roblox is not having a bad day. It's uh, it's up five and a half percent, and it's actually beating the market today in terms of performance. The pattern's the same, but the the sell-offs have not been as extreme, and um, the, the the rallies have been better. So oh, Roblox is having a good moment. $34, $34.80s. Airbnb. Oh, that's not having a good day. Uh, it's very similar to the wider market. Airbnb. It's trading very similar to the wider market. 100, uh, just below the VWAP. Spies. If you look at Airbnb, I'll change over to the SPY. That's the SPY. Very similar pattern. Very similar format. So it's trading with the market today. Yeah, absolutely. Roblox is um, having a good day. So, if you're in Roblox, good, good stuff. Entered at 33. You, you, made, you made a couple of good gains there. What's dollar 85, dollar 86 move? Congratulations, Poppy Boss. Happy for you. I, I like to hear when people are making good gains. I like to like to hear when people get on a pop and um, and and see. It. I mean. This would have been easier to trade on the five minute if you look. So the initial sell off at the open, then the rally up. You've got classic bull flag setups here. Um, so we get in here at 33.20. Uh, then another bull flag setup here. You could have re entered there at 34.40. 30, so on the five minute, some, some really good pattern setups there. Not as clear on, on the. Uh, one minute, but very clear on the five. I take it you were trading the five minute. Then, if, you, if you're saying it was an easy trade, Poppy, I take it you were trading the five minute um, uh, patterns there. Is that volume profile at the bottom? Yes. The, the histogram at the bottom is is the volume. Roblox looking very, very strong. AMC trying to make a move back up. ETST, we got out at the right time. Peru rejected at $13. Spirit Airlines back above the VWAP. SoFi ranging above and below the VWAP, so it's raining sideways at the minute, so, uh, so far. Let's see if um, AMC is going to give us anything. Thirty-seven is the high of the day. Breaking highs.
MC is not moving with the volatility we normally like to associate with it with the with the meme stocks. Get ten cents on this, I'll be happy. feeling it oh we made back most of what we what we lost early we can always get back in if it turns around let's look at Veru Veru trying to make a, a, a move back up it's I wanted to trade it so now I need to find an entry point what about SBFM I'll have a look at it not hitting my scanners anywhere so no, absolutely not. Um, from an intraday trade, it's just no volume. There's there's no no volume at all with SBFM. It's four percent up on the day, so it, it's not got the momentum in terms of volatility. There's no volume. There's nobody trading it. As, as day traders, you want to be following the crowds, and there's no crowd watching SBFM right now. Beirut. I oh, missed, missed my entry. Put in a late entry there. See if we get the move up. Only, only in for a thousand because it was a late entry, only in for a thousand shares. That way if it does pull back I can get it, I can get back in at thirteen. Add to the position. We go scaling. So we're, you know, we're grinding profits on the day already, so far, just by taking it easy, just by small base hits, not trying to swing for the fences every time. This makes a new low. We get out. Some you win, some you don't. Well, Puno, I keep telling you, um, red box. Is that still is that still moving? I'll have a look for you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's up today. Six six and a half percent. Not great volume. Relatively speaking, not great volume. Not a lot of movement. Two eighty seven. Or it's not going to make the huge gains that it did last week and the last couple of weeks. Uh, I don't like Redbox. I lost money on Redbox. Peru, AMC. Oh, here we go. AMC looking to make a little bit of a move. High of this candle is 12.37, 12.40. in there for the break to the upside not for the pullback it's had a pullback amc sort yourself out uh, 
make it at least a half dollar. Come on. Take half off there. We're not getting the huge moves and the huge range on the moves that we can that we normally associate with AMC. So I'm just being very cautious today. I'm not seeing me making big swings just yet. Just wanna a nice little cushion, maybe a big swing later if we see something that starts to move. And it's significant. This isn't about you know, making millions on a single trade. This is about base hits and consistency if you were consistently if, if you're making three winners for every loser then you're going to be profitable it doesn't matter you know the fact that you're only making um five cents per trade five cents on the share per trade if you're going in with two and a half thousand or, or, or five thousand shares at the time it, it adds up What do I know? Apparently, I'm an amateur doing um, trading amateur strategies that making amateur profits. All profits are profits, guys. Well, that's first candle break, a new log got us out. So, we're currently just shy of 1200 up on the day. Consistent, slow, steady gains. Who's this Labu? Why is this moving? Oh, it's an ETF. I'm trying to make a move upwards. All right, Spirit Airlines. We're gonna get looks like a double top there. That's probably that's that's usually a bearish pattern, so I'm not gonna trade that. BTST. Had this. Did anybody else see this lovely double bottom here? The move up. Now we're trying to have a reversal going. Oh, well, green on everything we've touched today so far. Oh, absolutely, cash flow. I love the haters. I love ridiculing them like I was doing earlier. It's uh, it just adds. It's, it's easier just to ridicule morons than it is to. Um, they say never argue with an idiot because onlookers don't know who's who. But I actually, it's good for the algorithm as well, but I actually enjoy um, enjoy the haters because they expose themselves and you don't really have to do much for them to expose themselves. Well, Veru, we're getting a bit of a flat top here at the quarter dollar level. Very might be looking to break out. It says as it breaks out. That's just scalping. A 
taking the half off. Just taking quick scalps here. Just take, taking profits along the way. Like I say, slow and steady today. I'm not, not looking for big swings. Looking for this to break the half dollar. Yeah, there we go. Pushing on that now. So we're $1,500 up on the day. Like I say, slow and steady. The market's been open less than an hour. And we're $1,500 up. So can't say fairer than that. Did we just get stopped out? Yeah. An um, extra bit of profit. Guys, if you want to learn how I'm doing this, check out the course in my description. It's taught by me. Tony. Learn to trade with Tony. I'm Tony, by the way. If anybody doesn't know who I am, I'm Tony. Come hustle with me. Learn to take, learn to day trade. Looks like the market's very choppy, very rangy. Oh, but look at this. I, I, I don't know why I wasn't paying attention to the spy. Look at this. I'll just zoom out. Who can spot the pattern? This is not a coin. This is this is stocks. This is this is the spy. This is the S and P five hundred. You know, big cigar goes to whoever spots the pattern first. What pattern? What pattern is? Um, yeah, it's a good stream today. What? What? Why have we only got two thousand likes though? Sixty people in the stream. But anybody know what pattern this was? This is on the, the S&P 500. Double barrel, double bottom. Actually known as, a, as a, a, a W. You've got the double bottom here. I don't know why I didn't spot that on the SPY. And it's looking to try and go, um, try and go higher. This is a, a double bottom on, on the uh, one minute. Now, if you're not trading the one minute, you'll have missed this. Because just look at it on the five minute, you can't see it. You can't see that pattern on the five minute, which is why you need to look at multiple time frames at any given point. So the five minute, you can't see it, whereas it's clear and obvious on the one minute. It's, I mean, that's a textbook double bottom. I could, I, I might actually take that and stick it in one of my courses and uh, uh, because that's, that's a textbook double bottom. Very, I need to zoom in. Slightly. Got pre market high here of where are we? Three quarter dollars. We get in here, a bit of a breakout on the fifty five. Some profit. Uh, move that up to break even. Don't get that break it. Break of highs. Second half just. I think I've got my mojo back, guys. I'm feeling it today. On the 60 minute. Hmm. I'm not quite feeling that, Alistair. Laptop was was pre market.
I get stuck stopped out. Yeah. Well, it's an extra couple of hundred bucks. And just by taking the cautious approach, we're not losing. Well, new or not, you're always welcome, um, Dan Taylor. Always welcome. What, what else is moving? Okay. Let's give, um, let's do a little bit of selling and shilling. Okay, so this is me right now. This is what I'm what I'm watching. If you go into my stream, uh, you click on on my face, swipe left, click on my face. It brings you to my profile. This is my profile. This is the TikTok stream, not the YouTube stream. If for the YouTube stream, go into the description, check the first link in the description. Uh, for the TikTok stream, if you click this link, it says here the TikTok trailer, a couple of pointy fingers to this 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 link. TikTok trader, you click that, you get this splash screen, just go through it, open it anyway, and it brings you to my link tree. Now this link tree gives you exactly what you've been asking me for the last hour. Um, where's the course? So this trade with Tony, learn to day trade. That's me, I'm Tony, learn to day, day trade with me. Uh, brings you to the course and you get started what do you get well right now you get a full comprehensive day trading course for beginners it's no complicated jargon very lay terminology easy to understand um, you get an introduction to trading if you're unsure go onto my YouTube channel the first lesson the introduction to trading lesson is up there for free you can watch that it's an hour long lecture then you've got risk management, uh, stock selection. How do I find stocks to trade? What? How do I pick them? How do I dismiss the other stocks that may have some of the, the criteria to trade? Uh, setting up your charts, understanding triggers, looking for windows of opportunity, looking where breakouts are. So for example, I got in Veru there. I said, look, Veru's looking to break out. How did I not? Intraday chart patterns, looking for, for, for those pattern breakouts. Um, the strategies that I use, uh, I use Benzinga for scanning, which I'll come to in a second. Stock scanners, how to set up your scanners, what to look for on your scanners. The biggest, probably the biggest hurdle everybody has to overcome is the psychological element of trading. You, you know, trade management in the psychological game, the emotional element. A um, bit more technical involved, level two, hotkeys, reading the tape. Then trading as a business, business planning. There's a, a full three month business plan that you can take and, and, and use as a template for yourself there. Uh, then advanced technical indicators like the relative strength index, um, the Bollinger Bands, uh, etc. And introductions to options trading. Right now I'm building out a swing trading course because I do swing trade with my profits from day trading. So I'm building out a swing trading course. You've got the first section of the swing trading course included as part of the day trading course right now. Once the full swing trading course is, is complete, that will be a separate course. So take advantage of it while you can. It's only 150 bucks a month, inclusive of tax. So $119 US plus tax wherever you are. It varies from region to region. You can get a cheap, I recommend going for the three month option. It's probably the best value option. It's probably going to take you three months to learn how to trade. If you want to keep scrolling down, I've updated my um, p &L. I've got February, March and April p &L there in terms of the statistics from my TraderView journal, but also my broker statements. And below that, I've got, again, November, the, the three months prior to that. So I've got six months p &L up there from my broker and, uh, and my trader view stats as well. It shows that I'm a profitable trader and the, the strategies I'm teaching are profitable. So get on that. Enjoy yourself, guys. Learn how to trade. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned there Benzinga. The scanners you're seeing in the middle of the screen, this is Benzinga. 
Uh, and Benzinga is what I use every single day to find stocks to trade. It tells me not only which stocks are moving and when and by how much, it also tells me, uh, you know, the news, why they're moving. Um, I, I get calendar alerts with regards to earnings, IPOs, all that kind of stuff. So um, Benzinga's great. Try it for free for 14 days. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Everybody wanting to know what it, I'm trading on, what's the platform I'm trading on? Dash Trader Pro. Uh, and that's that's this this link here. So get on it, guys, and um, I look forward to welcoming you to uh, to our private Discord. In that meantime, in the meantime, Drew had a lovely little break out there. But we don't. What we don't do is we don't fret the breakouts we miss, because there'll always be another one. There'll always be another trade. Never give in to FOMO. <laughs> Always fun when you make it when you when you're profitable um cash flow. Well you should have been watching the breakout there for the um if you, you were probably right to sell it, but then you could have got back in there for um for, for this this one up here. 1350 1355 you could have got back in. I'm looking at these two, 43. That's 43 as well. I'm not counting the fractions. Well done, Tony. So you probably sold at the right time, Alpuno. First candle to make a new low, but that doesn't mean that you can't get back in with the next candle to make a new high. If that's the case, you know, managing your risk is more important than managing your profits, as you know. While that's pulling back, I'm just going to take another bio break. I'm glad I can help. Well, let's um, let's watch the pullback. Is this gonna is, is this gonna turn into a flag breakout or is it just gonna sell off? That's the question. It's looking very much like it, it could be a flag breakout. But don't quote me on that. I'm not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. If you try and follow me and lose money, don't sue me. We've not had too much in way of um, movers. I, I spotted Faraday a little while ago, but just as it was breaking $3. Good stuff, Shando. Really like, uh, really like to hear that. Well done, Shando. Any day you make four grand in, in, in trading is a good day. You cannot complain. Pretty 
But just remember, Neil Puno, you, you, you missed it by one minute, but you'll there'll be another trade in five minutes' time. We're, we're now... It's kind of, what, 10.35 minutes? The market's been open a little over an hour. So we've, we've got a whole bunch of... Um, a whole bunch of trading still to do. The, the, the spies pull back to the VWAP. So the wider market's pulled back to the VWAP. But it's looking like it could go green on the day. It's still red on the day. The, the Russell's gone green, which is the small cap index. Um, the Dow's still red. The Nasdaq is still red. Um, and the SP is still red. But I'm, I've got a good feeling. I've got a good feeling. I'm not saying that that's that's certainly not financial advice. My uh, my gut feelings are not financial advice. Well, pig um, pie, gold pig. I hope they do. Oh, pig, old pig. I bought twenty five bucks worth of Luna on on Saturday just uh, instead of instead of ordering pizza. Just a speculative punt. I don't give up yet, Paul. And if um, if you've reached your daily max loss, walk away. Shut down, walk away. Have your max loss in mind. Daily max loss, shut down, walk away. We've got a lovely flat top forming up here. 1910. Look at it on the five minute even more relevant 1910 the higher time frames tend to be more reliable just saying WTI I'll have a look WTI had a bit of a pop out of the gates. Uh, it's four percent up on the day. W, w and T offshore is the company. Um, it's not a huge volume. Not a huge volume. It's having a, a reasonable day, but it's, it's not something I would choose to trade just right now. I'd, I'd, I'd wait for a setup, and next trade here would be around. 580, 580, 581-ish, 582. The range isn't great, so I don't know what you what you would set your goals at intraday trading this. Maybe look at it for a swing trade possibly, but it's not looking great in terms of trying to find a pattern or a safe entry and get a reasonable swing. You, there's there's not enough volatility in this uh, in this stock right now. So since the open, we've moved. 25 cents literally 25 cents so not huge range Peru on the other hand has moved a dollar and a half 12.50 at the lowest up to well it's two dollars 14.50 so there's, there's enough, um, certainly enough uh, volatility with Veru, and we're showing that because we've made over a good, over over a thousand dollars with Veru already today. We didn't get that breakout, so right now it's looking like switching to the five minute chart to trade it. We've got a bit of a fake out here. We've got a candle made a new high both here and here, and it didn't break out. We didn't even get well we got a little bit of a, a, a volume increase but it, just look for the five minute for confirmation as well if you can you're getting faked out you've more you've a higher percentage of chance to get faked out on the uh, one minute than you will on the five just say Anybody got any, uh, any, seeing any good moves? 
AMD seems to be having a good day. Higher price stock if you're like trading the uh, the, the higher the the larger cap stocks. AMD's up almost two percent, which is which is good for them. AMC, what did AMC do? Uh, it sold off for the last fifteen minutes. Let's have a look at Veru again. Went down to that thirteen ninety level. $14 area, $14 port area, we want to see it bounce on this. So the high of this five minute candle at the moment is 17. Yeah, I trade crypto. Like I say, I bought um, the book $25 worth of Luna on Saturday evening instead of ordering a pizza. I was going to order a pizza for my dinner. And uh, I decided, do you know what? I'm just going to take a, a punt on Luna. And I cooked myself some dinner and then spent the $25 on, on Luna instead. We'll see what happens. I just went green on the five minute. So I'm looking for a move up. In for fourteen thirty. Well, it's always worth a gamble. I mean, I, I, my advice is don't approach any financial instruments with a gambling mindset. But sometimes it's worth a punt. This candle is 96, so. Just scalping at the minute. It's profitable. We're two thousand up at the minute. So, um, have you ever tried le uh, leveraging leverage trading crypto? Technical analysis is very important. No, technical analysis is important. Whatever you're trading, uh, Sam. Uh, the, 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 I'm a technical analysis trader. I, I trade the patterns on technical analysis. Why I don't trade crypto intraday in the same way I trade stocks, uh, and, I'm, and occasionally I will. But more often than not, I'll trade stocks because of the volume. Uh, so I'll get a low cap stock like Veru, for example, and uh, it's traded 18 million uh, shares have been traded today already on Veru. So I've got the volume and I've got the, the volatility. It's got it's it's 11 percent up on, on the day, but it was actually 10 percent down. So we've had a 25 percent swing to the upside with Veru. Uh, to get those kind of um, to, to get the kind of volume in crypto, you're really talking about the higher cap coins, and you don't tend to get the volatility with the higher cap coins on an intraday basis in the same way you do with stocks. So I'm not saying you can't get volatility. We're going to get a bit of a cup and handle here. Oh, is this going to be a handle? 
let's see. So that, that's why I don't trade crypto into you get the volatility with the lower cap stocks and you get the volume with the higher cap stock uh, sorry you get the volatility with the lower cap coins and you get the volume with the higher cap coins in crypto whereas here you get both volatility and volume and you need volume for the pattern breakouts Now that was a cup and handle, but we've not actually had the move to the upside yet. like it might break laws but we're gonna fake out there Faked out. Hold on. Saying that. But one tried pretty much wiped out the profits. That's good, that one, um, Sam. Well done. AWH Vikram. It's 77 cents. I don't trade penny stocks, as, as people may know, but it's having a good day. 78% up on the day. If you trade those low price uh, stocks, take a look. to declare the cup and handle maybe this is the handle now like a good uh, a good cheap stock to be um getting in on if you've if you've got no leverage if you've got a cash account it's it could be worth looking at good spot vikram but as you as you're probably aware i don't i don't trade stocks that are less than three dollars for a number of reasons Reason one is I'm not usually very profitable with stocks of that price. Reason number two, I don't get leverage on it, which is always a good, um, good reason. This isn't a coin. A 
pick to point zero. It isn't a coin. This is this is uh, a stock. It's called Veru. The company's called Veru. It's a it's a bio it's a bioscience company. This is the stock market. We're trading stocks and uh, we're trading equities, stocks and shares. AMC ever do? I didn't, didn't do much since we were trading it down at twelve nineteen. Back down at twelve nineteen. ETST never came back. Looking for the half dollar. A little bit of a fake out there. Oh, 20, 30, 20 million shares traded of Beru this morning. Going back on now. Two fake outs in a row. Snoring shows up again. Oh, somebody was talking about Redbox. So Redbox is now making them hitting the scanners. Still worth getting back in? I, I, I think so. I'll see. Consolidate. Five minute work. 
21. ETST having a bit of a bump. Just sideways at the minute though. Third time lucky. Take it out twice. No volume coming through. We're in 1424 is our average cost. I see this back up at 1430s, 1440s. This tune always reminds me of a um, scene from Silence of the Lambs. I do me. Buffalo Bill. We got the move up. I didn't take the profits when I should have. It's typical. Didn't get the volume follow through. Getting a little bit of an increase in volume now, but it's to the downside. Looking at the tape, there's not a lot of movement on the tape and it's red. Hey Kalechi. It's four o'clock. It's time for the stream to end shortly after this trade. I need to get a better a better chair. This is supposed to be a posturepedic chair. This it's supposed to be good for this lumbar support and everything. It's, my back's ruined. sat at your desk all day this is why i like to get out with the dog after i've been trading because it just a bit of exercise helps alleviate my knees are too shot to be going down the gym and stuff but just a bit of gentle exercise helps um unwind those back muscles bit of a flat bottom on this one as well now so that's looking quite bearish lack of volume the volume has just died off since the last peak so I think I'm just gonna get out of this trade in a minute
really need volume to pick up, otherwise this trade's going to go the wrong way. First candle to make a new law from here, our exit. get back in if it makes new highs that one just came down low low 420 I took most of the position off like it's reversing now we're getting lower highs so it might come around a little bit lighter but it's, it's consolidating down towards $14 so I want to see it set up before we get back in so Veru is a continuation from last week and it then hit the scanners with momentum and volume so it's traded 21 and a half million shares today in terms of volume and it's currently nine percent up on uh, on the previous closing price but in the the momentum that it um that it hit was it was about 10 percent down only seven percent down on the day uh, pre-market and it's turned it around so even since the market opened it's it's moved over two dollars the upside. The things that you're looking for when you're selecting stocks is you're looking for volume and volatility. And it's got the volatility and hence the range. And with and it's relative volume rather than just pure volume. So with nearly 22 million shares traded already today this is trying to make a move up it's just on low volume now the, the, the volumes died out since um since 10 45 market time that's the problem here it's just consolidating sideways ranging kind of 10 cents between 14.20 and 14.30 one way or the other it's got a bright DTST is trying to make a move upwards I'm not in it for investing more. I'm day trading it. I don't care about um, about it long term. I don't care about any of these stocks long term. I'm looking at uh, I'm day trading it. So I don't care whether it uh, is diluting its shares or not. If it's got momentum on a particular day, I'll trade it. If I look at what was the one I looked at this morning, Neurosense. 
example. Neurosense. And Neurosense, there you go. I traded this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it moved up, look at it on the daily. It, back in, in March, I think it was. It moved up 750% on the day. And I traded that day. We made a huge amount on that. So I think we made about 30, 36,000 on it that day. Um, but look, it's just sold off. I didn't hold it. I didn't hold position on it. Absolutely not. I don't care about these stocks. The majority of these stocks that I'm trading on an intraday basis are garbage companies. There's a reason why the why they're priced at three, four, five dollars. The garbage companies. They're not good companies. They're having a good day, which gives them the volatility, and they'll move two, three, four hundred percent, which is fantastic. And if they're moving two, three, four hundred percent, I want a piece of that action. But I'm not holding, I'm not investing in them long term. I'm not holding these long term. I'm not even going to hold them overnight. Because as you can see here, it, it moved up and then it got down before moving up again the next day. So even if you hold, hold it overnight, you could be in a, a, a very precarious position. If that decides to move down instead of up, you're not even going to get your money. <laughs> you're going to be holding massive bags. A lot of people probably were left holding massive bags, even though it moved up on the day. Uh, again, this one, it gapped down again before moving up and then selling off. So a lot of these companies are just garbage companies, uh, but they have one particular day that they, they'll move a lot. Now, Veru moved huge amounts on Friday. If we go back to Veru on the daily, you see how the, the volatility of Veru, you can see how I've traded it a few times, but it moved up on Friday, gapped up on Friday, and it moved up really, really well. We got... A, some really good trade. In fact, we've traded this after I was on Friday as well, which is um, shown on the YouTube channel. Uh, and then today we've moved up and, and, and traded it on its move up. So we're looking at it's now below 14s. It, whether it dilutes its shares or, or not, it doesn't matter. GME diluted its shares and, and the market bought, bought them all up. Not interested in the, in the fundamentals. I'm very, I'm fleetingly interested in the fundamentals. I floor size catalyst but the main the main fundamentals i don't care i don't care whether it's it's profitable i don't care whether it's um uh, it's it's doing a stock split planning a stock split or, or diluting its shares or anything like that. i don't care I don't care if it's a pump and dump. That's that's the whole point, Mo. It's it, you, you're reading too much into the fundamentals of a company from an intraday trading perspective. If it's got a catalyst, an earnings report is a good catalyst. Um, it's it's often the catalyst that that sparks that momentum. Um, you don't care. The fundamentals don't necessarily impact the intraday movement in the way that you're thinking. So if we're, we're getting uh, I trade the technicals. If we're getting the catalyst enough to give it that volatility, and there's enough volume for the follow through on that volatility, then it's good enough to day trade. We're not interested in holding it long term. It can sell off. It can, you know, do stock splits. It can dilute its shares. I don't care. I, I won't be involved in it when that happens. It's not. I'm not investing. This is. This is not. This is this is day trading. It's not investing. I do investing, and I wouldn't invest in Veru. I wouldn't invest in in SBFM or, or Neurosense. I wouldn't invest in Indonesian Energy. And these are stocks over the last three four months that I've made quite a lot of money on. But I wouldn't invest in them long term. Absolutely not. Now people have lost money on AMD. People have lost money on Micron. But those are companies that I'm holding long term. Intraday, you might be losing out. I don't care because I'm the positions that I'm holding long term. I don't care about intraday moves. I, I'm holding them long term for a reason. So when they do move down, I'll buy. I'll add more shares at a discount and, and dollar cost average. On this dollar cost averaging intraday trading, is is paramount to suicide. You don't do dollar cost averaging.
didn't get the volatility I thought might have come with um, with that bid for Spirit. Like GME and AMC. I wouldn't invest in either of these long term. It's a risky stock in, in the sense that it's volatile. If you put a money in it long term, then you don't want to try it. You, you don't want to invest in it long term. I, I, I'm not saying don't invest in it long term. Do your own research, do your own due diligence. I'm not a financial advisor. What I'm saying is not financial advice. But from a day trade point of view, you trade the momentum. You trade where the volatility is, you trade the, the, the volume. If you've got the momentum on, on a stock and you ride the moves to the upside or even ride the moves to the downside. I couldn't short Vero on Friday when I wanted to. Is it shortable today? It is shortable today. So it was on the short sale restrictions list on Friday. So I was unable to short it. I, I know I agree. I agree with you, Finsky, on that one. Amazon's on on a. It's on a. You can buy it at the discount at the moment. I think there's a lot of S and P companies that you can buy at the discount at the moment because the S and P is at a discount at the moment. But Amazon, like I said, Amazon, AMD, Micron, uh, technology, Nvidia, especially Nvidia. I think Nvidia's got great. Again, not um, not financial advice, just my own personal personal opinion. I think those stocks have uh, that are a little bit beat up in line with the wider market. So right now, as soon as the market starts to rally properly, instead of this this choppy up and down on a daily, uh, those will go to all time highs again. See, you're thinking of Amazon as a retail retail store more. Uh, and Amazon isn't a retail store. Amazon is a data company. Amazon is the leader in data storage. Globally. So there's more There's more to Amazon than just um, delivery packages and uh, package delivery and... Uh, Exactly, and it's the AWS piece that that is um, is makes up the the huge chunk of the revenue. People think of Amazon, they think of the re the online retail store that they, they, they get packages delivered overnight, next day delivery. That's not Amazon. You know, Amazon is much bigger than that. Netflix use Amazon, for example. You know, a lot of a lot of the world's data is stored on Amazon servers. Flywheel? Care to elaborate on that, Finsky? So it's the it's the it's the end. It's not the the retail space, the com the consumer space where Amazon makes most of its money. People think it is, and it's not. In the enterprise space, serving enterprise customers. Serving, you know, Fortune 500 customers. That's where Amazon makes most of its money. Yeah, well, all of them are doing that. I remember working in Dell and we had what was known as um, as below cost selling. So we were selling uh, laptops and desktops below cost to get the, the server and, and storage and switch business. And, and I remember selling um, workstations into, into Rolls Royce for like minus 5%. So they, in fact, Rolls Royce ended up... Uh, ended up um, paying us 
for them to take the the money in in effect but for them to take the um the the workstations but we got the hyper the hpcc business which is the hyper uh, hyper converged computing clusters uh and that was i won that contract it was like 60 million dollars annually worldwide you know the the and it, on good margins about 40 percent margin whereas the workstation business was man we were losing minus five percent on on the deal but it was only three it was three million dollars contract so a lot of these big companies they they, they they do what's called portfolio plays they they will sell certain products at a loss to maintain a customer or to onboard a customer or win a customer with a view to selling them something much higher margin down the road and amazon's no different I think in terms of growth potential, I think NVIDIA's got a great potential. First, my personal point of view, based on the, the way that the, the economies are going, um, NVIDIA, the chipsets, the, the graphics cards, the, you know, particularly into the gaming space, uh, e-gaming, sports, um, e-sports, that kind of stuff. Uh, then we're getting into the whole metaverse and, and crypto gaming and, and NVIDIA is right at the heart of that. So I, th I think NVIDIA has got a great potential going forward. Anyway, it's 20 past four. Should have ended the stream at four. So I will be back for Power Hour later. Uh, join me for Power Hour and uh, I will get back to it and walk the dog. So I'll catch you guys later for Power Hour and we'll see... Metaverse, it's just going to be a gaming platform, in my opinion, and, and what, what we're talking about. You know, people can earn money by gaming. But, you know, anyway, I'll catch you guys later in the street. <laughs>